I just grew up from such a tiny age, like just loving the sea critters. I just had so many of those like Discovery Kids books about like whale zoo books. Man, if you were a kid back in the day and you your parents could actually afford a subscription of zoo books, you were the cool kid. Let me tell you, I can't tell you how many times the zoo books come You remember the zoo books commercial? Oh my God. Ah, <laughs> this whole bit is ruined. Anyways, they'll remember. Great. You remember. Moving on. Welcome back to Nature League. This week is our very fun, very favorite, very silly, just completely silly, from A to B, where my friend Adrian Adams poses a question about the natural world to me, Britt Garner, and whatever happens, happens. And we record it, and that's kind of the whole plan. So let's learn a little bit, laugh a little bit, all of the above. What do you have for me this month, Adrian? Okay, so if dolphins are so smart, why can't they build cars? So. <laughs> All right. Okay, no, no, no. So humans, we all manipulate things with our hands. And manipulating the environment and creating tools is like how you become an advanced, like a really advanced species, right? So how come Maybe. there are no animals in the ocean that manipulate their environment like we do? Like, why did life have to leave the ocean and come on land for humans to become what we are. Why couldn't that fish that like, you know, waddled up on land was like, <gasps> eh, and then just waddle back into the ocean and just keep evolving. The first couple probably did, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> the first hundred or so, most likely it looked something like that. I'm not into it. <laughs> first of all, talking about complexity, environment manipulation, and then, uh, you know, intelligence and tool making. So these are all a little bit different. So we got to be a little fair. Almost all life on Earth manipulates its environment. It really does. And so then, because even by, like, moving space, creating space, that was almost moving bad. Moving my cuff. But I, for example, altered Do, your habitat. You are not a cat. <laughs> you are not playing the gravity game. Yep, yeah, still works. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like octopuses, they do incredible things with their their tentacles. Each one of those suction pads, like they have neurons running through each one of their tentacles. So they are like thinking with each hand. So it's almost like they are like experiencing the world in a different way than us just touching things. Hmm. I'm just trying to point out that there are all kinds of ways that an, an organism sure. can manipulate its environment, okay? Yes, humans, there's definitely something about tool use, right? We said apes, which humans yeah. would be one of those. But what is it about land that would maybe lead to something like thumbs, right? Maybe that's kind of, right, one of these questions. Go ahead and say it. Hey. <laughs> so that fish. Yeah. Right? This, <laughs> there he is. Ah. The, coming, coming up, there's a couple of things other than that face. <laughs> That's the sound of it too. <laughs> Sorry. Couple of things besides that face and those sounds that would have been a problem. First of all, how's it gonna get around? Locomotion, right? That's yeah. exactly how are we gonna move? And then think about structurally what it means to all of a sudden not have help with gravity. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in water, you are aided by the fact of either like flotation, buoyancy, mm -hmm. and you don't have the effects of gravity. So the entire skeletal system had to change according to that kind of a weight, right? Collapsing on itself. So like the idea of like rib cages, our vertebra had to get stronger, our necks to support like the weight of a head, like not just with water. Okay. We had entire structural differences, right? Okay. So start thinking about if you didn't have those kinds of structures, land would feel like absolute hell in terms of like gravity all of a sudden. That sounds like uh, a, like just a bad time. So why would you even want to go from the ocean onto land? But if we're talking about the first land creatures, there's no uh, uh, predators out there, right? Yeah. I assume it's not pred. It, w it wasn't going to be predators from the ocean going onto land. It would be the prey, and because plant life probably already evolved and was out there, it and did. There was just all this food and nothing to take it. So, okay, so land is pretty dope. I mean, you know, I mean, the the <laughs> the, the, the frontier uh, land creatures. 
The interesting thing is that's one of the bits that we haven't quite figured out. We have guesses, so we have pretty decent hypotheses about why land, and those are some, some of the reasons. It's like, oh, maybe to avoid predation, or oh, maybe to get more prey, or oh, maybe there is just something energetically favorable. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about biodiversity and how something might use tools or get these things called thumbs, you have to think about that evolutionary pressure, like that selective pressure. Mm -hmm. So you're on land, you're up against all this kind of stuff. The skeletal system has to change to adapt to the fact that there's gravity and locomotion, right? Okay. And so having a fin is not exactly the way to go anymore. But have you seen an x-ray or like a drawing or a skeleton of a whale? No. I was going to say no before you said of a whale. <laughs> I was just going to say, never seen a drawing, an x-ray, or a fin ever in my life, <laughs> but I missed it. Honestly though, I don't think I have of a whale. Can you in your mind think about what a whale skeleton would look like? What do you think the skeleton of a fin looks like? I don't know, just a big old thing of cartilage. Is there bones in there? Are there phalanges? Are you serious right now? You thought it was a block of cartilage? I don't know. I, it's not something I've ever thought about. Oh, that's exciting. A whale's fins, so these, the mm -hmm. pectoral fins, these yes. right here, right? The fins. Yeah, they absolutely are, if you will, phalanges. It's basically the same thing. Whales have them. It literally looks like a human hand. And what about a bat's wing? Yeah, a bat's wing, sure. Think about that, yes. but then it's encased in the whale, uh, like the rest of the muscle and then skin and blubber. It's mittens made of cartilage, if you would. But, but no, but not, no, that's not correct. <laughs> Nope, <laughs> still not correct. Wait, it's not? So it's not a mitten. You can't say mittens made of cartilage because there's a lot of different tissue types that we see in that. Flesh mittens. TM. That one's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna totally rule that out. Okay. This actually has a name. It's called homologous structures, which are structures that we see um, in a lot of different life forms on Earth. Something as different as a human to a bat to a whale, pretty much the same plan. And that's kind of the neat thing about biodiversity is you see all these crazy forms, but there are a couple of these basic structures that just do really well and haven't had reason to change. Well, I mean, if you find something that just is like the optimal build for something, and then you just go from there, you know, but like this, these right here would just are like a perfect base and then all we have to do is like modify that to suit water or to suit land. That way, right? Because this was already happening because fish and I mean, you can, you mm -hmm. can like, it's not that there are well, bones there was, out, but there's the, the rays and the different kinds of structuring well, on well, fins. Well, even, even, even just manipulating, like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm visualizing like a stingray moving through the water, you know, it's got to do like a whole this thing and it's not going to be doing any of this thing. A stingray might be a bad option because there's no bones in it. Definitely a bad option. Fish, you can go with fish. fish. We see this kind of, we see that kind of motion. The fact that dolphins and whales, right, don't don't have this visible does not mean that body plan is not there. In fact, it is, but it hasn't evolved to be like, I've got thumbs, let me make manipulable tools because guess what? Cars. Yeah, but you can't swim well mm -hmm. as well with this, right? To have an actual fin is what is necessary for that environment. So you're saying that the skeletal structure, like the basic idea, you know, a spine, limbs, uh, a neck, all these things already existed on that fish that waddled out of the ocean and it simply adapted to what it needed because it was already adapted to the water mm -hmm. and that's why it had a fin instead of a hand and then all it had to do was just re-adapt a little differently to this new thing. Well, just a, to a ton of very small changes over time, right? And then there might have been different ways that organisms chose to or wound up surviving, right? Passing on genes or mutations that help them deal with those things we've already talked about, about land that is so rough, right? The fact that we have to have weight, the fact that we have to move, the fact that the body plan is different, right? These the kinds of things. The fact that you can't just like stop in the middle of whatever you're doing and be like, oh, it's nighttime, I'm gonna go to sleep now. Also that. You know, like fish. Also that. So if there had been selective pressure for, I need to get rid of all the flesh mitten <laughs> TM. around my hand because I need to grasp things and I can't and I'm gonna die because of it, then for all we know, dolphins could make cars and like really good ones. 
but they got the flesh in the way. All right. They are already a flesh car. I'm not keeping that one. No, no. Okay. Discard. Discard. We'll do better next time. So does that make sense? Because it, it, making tools is just one way we can talk about complexity. I, but what about like brain I, capacity? In which case the... Well, no, see, I was thinking about it from totally like a physiological standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I was thinking that the human form is the optimal form for advanced life when in fact it isn't, it's just the optimal form for advanced life on land. If you throw a human into the water, we suck. I personally am far more graceful without gravity. <laughs> oh, God. People who see me walk, they're like, oh boy, but That's you should true. see me in the water. <laughs> Actually, I've never seen you in the water. I'm an angel. <laughs> oh, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't yeah. bump into things nearly as much, probably because there's a more open space and not corners. Well, technically you're bumping into water the whole time. <gasps> Thanks, everybody. It's been great. It has been great. Do you know why? Why? Because I think you came to a pretty nice little conclusion that is one of the things we know about biodiversity, which is that we have so many versions because there are so many different versions of environments and selective pressures, right? Mm -hmm. And so the plan, whether it's the body plan or the eating plan or the way I use habitat plan, those plans are all different because life on Earth has evolved to the requirements set by it to just survive. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty awesome, right? Yeah. So it's okay for you to think about these things from a human perspective, because you're a human. Mm -hmm. But as a shark, I think about them a little <laughs> bit differently. <you> know? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on this month's episode of From A to B, where my friend Adrian asks me, Britt Garner, a question about the natural world. And we enjoy our time, learn a little bit, and definitely get to laugh a lot. Have so, some, we have some goofs. Some goofs. It's a good time. Thanks for joining us. Have an excellent rest of your week, and we'll see you next week when we start our very next month, which is going to be themed invertebrates. Mm -hmm.